Hello YouTube. In this video we're going to take a look at the HP ProLine Microserver Generation 8 once again. It's been a while since I've done an update on this little machine. Ever since I've started to use the DL380G7 I haven't actually done anything with this machine. Uh, not as a main server anyway. It's always been my little test rig. But uh, I've decided to dedicate this one to running some lighter services, uh, perform some file sharing tests that I don't want my NAS to, uh, to do. For instance, sharing files between older operating systems. Because quite frankly, uh, modern virus scanners really like to flag old files as dangerous. And uh, some of the sources I get them from are questionable the best. So let's put it that way. So today we're going to be replacing the drives that are in it right now. These drivers are still scorching hot. Very nice and warm. These are 600 gig drives. There's 15K serial attached SCSI or SAS. We're also replacing the controller that's in the server right now, which is an old LSI 1068 based controller, which is actually uh, still an IBM Serve RAID BR10i. Very old basic uh, RAID controller. Now these are uh, some of the drives that I'll be putting back in again. The, these are uh, two terabyte SAS drives. These are just 7200 RPM. The other ones are 15,000 RPM. Um, but I'll be keeping these with the other two drives uh, for the time being, just at least until I've uh, figured out my uh, uh, setup and whether my backup has worked. So let's take a look at the controller next. All right, so here's the money shot. This is the old controller. This is the LSI SAS 3082ER. That's what it says on there, at least. When you look at the firmware, this is actually still a, like I said, IBM Serve Rate BR10i. This is a very basic controller that can only really do uh, rate 1 and 0 and, well, 1E. So it's uh, not all that amazing. It can do SAS 1.1, so that's 3 gigabits per second. And this is the controller that we'll be replacing it. This one supposedly also supports JBOT, which means independent disks, uh, to be addressed to the operating system, which is very nice and uh, very useful because I've got like eight of these drives, these eight terab or these uh, two terabytes, uh, 7200 RPM SAS drives. These are really, really Hitachi Ultra Stars, but uh, you know from 2013, but I've got eight of these in total, so <laughs> there's definitely, uh, I definitely want to use some of them independently, just for a separate task for archiving purposes. So there's that, but uh, this is a slightly newer controller. Apparently this one was used by Sun Microsystems, and judging from a sticker that I see on here. This is the SAS 9211-8i which supports 6 gigabit per second SAS and uh, RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10 so uh, this should definitely uh, be more than plenty for my needs and it already comes with a low profile bracket attached so I can install it in the microserver which doesn't have full size slots so just for good measure we're going to go over the drives that I'll be putting in here these are the same I just showed these are uh, 2 terabyte SAS drives, 7200 RPM these are from January 2013. They came from an existing storage array that was decommissioned. So I got a bunch of these drives, so that's very nice. The caddies that uh, these come in are compatible with my micro server. These are from Generation uh, 8 derived uh, servers, so they will fit just fine. And uh, I'll be putting these in RAID 10 so I can get 4 terabytes of storage with two drives, uh, full tolerance and the best performance uh, with actually actually having some redundancy left. So that's what's going to happen in this video. So uh, yeah, uh, oh, but also by the way this is going to be running Hyper-V 2012 R2 because that's uh, what I'll be uh, using on this. I have an ESXi server that's my DL380 G7 and this server will be running Hyper-V just so I can get uh, myself familiarized with Hyper-V a bit more as well. I use it uh, quite a lot at work. I don't use ESXi that much. ESXi is just a personal preference. But uh, having Hyper-V around is also very handy. And it's Windows, so it's easy to manage, easy to back up, all that stuff. Enough talking. It's time to put the controller in the server 
and then uh, see if we can actually uh, do something with the uh, RAID controller's utility. Alright, the controller is in place. I've also added this little drive here. This is a 160 gig WD black uh, laptop drive. Because uh, I'm not sure if, the, if we have the proper firmware on the card yet. I want to flash it to IT mode. It might not be in IT mode yet. So just for the sake of that, I don't want to make a race yet. I'll be installing Hyper-V Server uh, 2012 R2 on, uh, or well, Server 2012 R2 with Hyper-V Roll uh, on this uh, laptop drive for the time being. And uh, then we'll just go from there. Or I could make a bootable DOS USB and flash from there. I'll, uh, but uh, I like doing it the hard way, so we're going to do that. So we can now put the lid back on. That's the easy thing with these microservers. Just drop the lid back on there, and it's good to go. So I can get the old card out of the way. We don't need that for now. Mind you, I have no idea whether the LSI card works at all. <laughs> Not a clue. Let's see how the drives go in. They go in this way. And snap it in place. It's very satisfying. Especially pushing this button. Mm, yeah. The simple things in life, right? I've also opted to just go for four of these drives, not just because I have them, but also because these will generate a bit less heat than the 600 gig 15k drives. The system runs quite toasty if I'm running a couple of heavy VMs on there. But uh, yep, now it's back together, so now we can start looking at the uh, software side of things. Alright, we are now on the software side of things like I mentioned. And uh, this is, of course, Windows Server 2012 R2. As you can see here, with our Xeon E3 1220, which is a quad-core without hyper-threading, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So, I've already set up the uh, correct firmware on the card. As we can see here in the physical overview, all disks are listed as unconfigured good, because the uh, firmware is now in IT mode, so the controller can initialize and use all the different disks independently. That's what I was after, so I could actually swap disks and just use them independently if I wanted to. Now I can, and I will just handle software RAID. It performs a bit less, but it's a lot more convenient uh, if you have a lot of different disks laying around. I have eight of these disks, so I might have to uh, change one or the other at some point. And it's a bit easier to deal with in software, usually. And I can just put one disk in it, write some data to it, and put it in the archive. So. I couldn't do that any other way. So I've already set the drives up in the software RAID 10 using Windows Storage Spaces. I'll take a look at that right here. As you can see, we have two storage spaces. I've named these Disk Group 0 and Disk Group 1, and they both contain a single mirror of two drives. Because they're all 2 terabyte drives at 1.8 terabytes of effective space, we can see that both of these arrays are now 1.82 terabytes in size. The next step that I had to take was to uh, make these volumes show up here, and they do. These are both those mirrors that we just saw in storage spaces, and then I put a stripe across these. This is now a RAID 10, because in a RAID 10 you have two mirrors that you stripe. So you write data to both mirrors at the same time, and you read from both mirrors at the same time as well. This gives you a very nice read performance boost, as well as a nice write performance boost. So that should give us the best possible performance, and the best uh, redundancy. Uh, the only real thing you lose here is capacity, because of course you have two mirrors, so you lose half the space per array. So effectively you only have... Uh, across these four disks, 50% of usable space. But that's okay. Another thing that I had to tackle is I actually had to leave the uh, 160 gig WD black drive in there as a boot volume because uh, this microservice generation 8 does not support UEFI boot. So it does not support booting from GPT volumes, or volumes that have a GPT partition table rather. Uh, and the limits to an MBR partition table disk is partition sizes of up to 2 terabytes. 
if I wanted to do the RAID 10 immediately, I would have a volume of about 4 terabytes, and that's 2 terabytes too much. Or in fact, uh, judging from the available space here, 1.63 or yeah, 1.63 terabytes too much. So I'd have to split it into two partitions anyway. So by foregoing that and just choosing a single SATA disk that I stuck on top of the server, like you uh, saw in a previous clip, uh, I could just boot from that and use that as a boot volume temporarily, and then use the uh, four terabyte volume uh, using the GPT partition table. I just can't boot from it, but it works just fine. This is now just that 5400 RPM or whatever it is laptop drive. This will be upgraded to a cheap SSD I ordered uh, a couple days ago. So uh, at least we'll have some more uh, rigidity that way. Because quite frankly, an old laptop drive is not that great as your boot volume because that is just your uh, single point of failure for your entire server. An SSD will be the same way, of course, but it's uh, a little, li little uh, bit more resilient. So let's see here. This is now reporting a volume with T that's about 4 terabytes. That's probably my network drive. Yes, it is. That's the home folder on my NAS, which will also get a uh, upcoming video, by the way. I uh, will be upgrading to a slightly newer model soonish. So, but I want to benchmark volume H here and take a look at the speeds that we're getting here on the RAID 10. Again, this is a software RAID, so it will not perform as well because all of the uh, cycles will have to be handled by the CPU rather than the uh, onboard controller. But uh, that's not bugging me one bit. So let's see what kind of read speed we're getting here. This is a 6 gigabit SAS controller. So in the ideal world, it can handle up to uh, transfers of 600 megabytes per second. But we're not going to see that, obviously. So this is with four 7200 RPM drives in a software RAID 10. And we're getting about 332 megabytes per second uh, sequential read. That's pretty good. I'm going to let this test run and I'll get back right away. All right, so the results are in. And as we can see, we've got pretty good, uh, pretty good speeds overall. 332 megabytes read and 315 megabytes write. And all the others right there. I'd say that's pretty good for just some four uh, Hitachi Ultrastar 700 RPM SAS drives. They're really nothing all that special. They're just built for longevity. Of course, if you have 15K drives, the speed will go up significantly. In the past, I've uh, used, especially, uh, by the way, in that uh, in my DL380G7, I've got 15K SAS drives, 146 gig each, and uh, all of those eight drives working together in a RAID 5, uh, I see read speeds of around 600 megabytes per second. That thing also has a 6 gigabit SAS controller, and so that controller just gets completely saturated by the uh, by the drives there. You won't see that all that quickly with regular 7200 RPM drives, but uh, speeds, as you can see, are definitely very nice to have. So I think that's basically it as far as the uh, upgrade goes to the uh, micro server. Um, I'm not sure if I will actually update this video as soon as I get the SSD in to... Uh, make this thing a boot from an SSD instead of just this uh, crappy old laptop drive. But uh, for the time being, I think the system is fine. I'll uh, closely monitor the health on the drive that's in it now, and uh, I think I'll be good. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.